You are listening to Vets Nation Talks, the show that highlights veteran-owned businesses, the people, and their mission. Thousands of successful businesses are owned and operated by seasoned veterans, and their stories are inspiring. Join Carl Wolfenden as he has conversations with our heroes, talking about their mission out of uniform. Veterans Supporting Veterans on Vets Nation Talks. The guests and topics on this show are not always affiliated with Vets Nation's talks, and any comments are the opinions of the individuals, and we strongly advise, before making any decisions, to research the options available. Vets Nation Talks, the voice of VetsForVetsNation.com with Carl Wolfenden. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Vets for Vets Nation. And, uh, you know, here on Business Class News, if you've been following the stories uh, that we've been having over the past few weeks, a uh, couple of months now, uh, since Memorial Weekend, um, we, uh, we, we launched uh, a community. Uh, an online community is part of uh, Business Class News uh, called Vets for Vets Nation, uh, dot com, and, and the whole purpose of that was really to to really support v- veterans um, from all the branches of the military and to celebrate them, uh, and especially uh, the veterans that are in business because that's what we're doing. We're vets for vets. I mean, we want to su- support each other, as everyone knows. I, I was military police, and um, I-, I wanted to to help you know um, communicate, spread the word, and really grow um, uh, the partnerships that that we we see out there, out in uh, in in business today. And we did that, and we launched it, and now we've got a special podcast, which of course is called Vets for Vets Nation. And um, you know, we're going to be showcasing. Uh, veteran-owned businesses and really focusing on what they're doing and how they're adding to the community uh, and, and with the different services and products that they have to sell. And so, so today, um, I, I met this uh, this young lady uh, a, a couple of months ago um, on um, Women's Veterans Day, and not many people know Women's Veterans Day, but it, it, it was. Um, and um, it literally, it was back in June, and she was the uh, award-winning last year of the pitch business pitch contest with the uh, the Women's Veterans uh, Enterprise Center, and they do a, a pitch contest. And she won it last year, and this year she was one of the judges. And, um, you know, we, we, I said, I've got to have you on the show because literally I was listening to what uh, she was doing. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell, tell you her name. It's it's Alicia Makaya. Mac- Is that how I pronounce her last name? Makaya. Makaya, there you go. I, I knew I knew I'd get it wrong. I apologize, but uh, and, and people call me lots of names, and uh, and I just go with it. Uh, but um, we met, as I said, on the uh, uh, on the pitch contest that uh, was being held. You were one of the judges, and um, you know GXA just struck me when I was listening to the backstory of your company. I thought, you know what, you're a veteran. You're of the the from the Air Force. You're in the military uh, branch of the Air Force, and thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Um, and so, um, so tell me first of all before we get into you know your your business and what you do as such um you know how how did being in the air force really shape the way you wanted to really go out into in, into the private sector as such and uh, when you left the military uh, and and start up GXA well first of all carl i want to thank you so much for inviting me to be a guest on this particular show and just being able to highlight veterans i just think that's so important for the community Uh, as well as, you know, even for the veteran community, for us to see of each other as veterans. Once we get out, oftentimes we don't see each other. Um, And so being able to see each other in a platform of of like yours is really uh, awesome. And I just really appreciate that. So just let's talk about my Air Force career. Um, I was in uh, basically public health in the Air Force. I prepared all of the um, the troops to, to be deployed and to go out to third world countries, typically. 
And my my job was basically to to get them ready. I had to tell them all about diseases. I had to make sure their shots were up to date. I basically had to make sure that they were, uh, you know, everything medically as well as mentally prepared for walking into this third world country. And, you know, how I in the, the, the actual skills that I learned when I was an Air Force veteran are so imperative. Some things I've never let go of, Carl. You know, I just I have never in, in the, the skills that they teach you are really lifelong skills. They're skills that you can utilize in your everyday life. Some of my skills I still use on my, you know, from my personal perspective. They teach you how to fold clothes how to, uh, they introduce you to how to manage your life on a day-to-day basis, as well as time management, uh, being very disciplined, being very persistent, not giving up, getting going back in there and trying again. And the military is really big on training. These are just, these are transferable skills that will just, uh, even if you're not a business owner, I'm a business owner. And some of these, these training skills, there was a reg Carl, for everything in the military, everything you did. Was I remember down. it well. I remember it well. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Even in the British military, they did the same thing. So, yep, you're right. Yes. So I tend to be very, very meticulous when it comes to uh, processes, uh, which is, you know, definitely not surprising because my background, of course, is the military. I like to be organized. I like I like for things to be written down. I still have a lot of binders. Uh, a lot of things have, of course, transferred over to the computer. Um, so I think COVID forced me to kind of let go of my last bit of paper, my, my holding on to paper and, and binders. <laughs> yep. I think I think COVID actually, unfortunately, uh, changed our lives in a lot of ways. But, yes. you know, it, it transferred us into a more of a digital age for sure. Yes, absolutely. And so, so, uh, go, so, ahead. so go, go, go ahead, please. No, I just I was just going to say, in summary, these skills that I learned in the Air Force, transferable. I still make up my bed the same way that I was taught in the military. I still fold clothes the same way that I was taught in the military. Uh, there's just some parts of my life when it comes to service. I still I still believe in service very deeply. Um, it's embedded into the culture of my organization. Uh, I am, you know, in the Air Force, our motto was service before self. And definitely, you know, it's a little bit harder to do that, you know, in, in, the, in the civilian world, service before self, because sometimes you can get in trouble. But I still have a very strong service part of my life that was instilled in me. Uh, and part of that came from the military. I think, you know, listening to you say all of those things, I mean, first of all, I was taught, and I think there's a video there that my daughter actually showed me, because I've been saying it for a while. If you start the day off right, you make your bed, uh, and you, you you make sure that everything, that that just that one thing, it starts it off, it gets you mentally prepared for the day ahead. And that's what we were instilled in us. And we, maybe I didn't really uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, agree with it at the time and appreciate it, but um, I, I sure do afterwards. It's, it's funny, isn't it? I, you know, you go through some, you know, hard things and you, 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 you go through different disciplines, etc. At the time, sometimes you don't realize that they are beneficial until afterwards. And then you look back and go, you know what? That is very, very uh, applicable to my my life today, and it helps me. I think it's very important. Absolutely. So, so you know, also um, I, what I love about what you just said in, in in that great intro there was was that there are certain things that you've you learned your skills, etc. And and service before self is is very important. And I, from what I remember as talking off mic, you know, when we first met as such, you you were talking about. You know, that's in a way that's how you started GXA. It's uh, you know, so tell us a little bit more about how you started the business. What 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 was the meaning behind GXA, and 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 just give us an overview. Yes, and so I was uh, when I got out of the military, I still was very service minded, still giving back to my community. Um, that was just a part of who I am. And I married, I married someone that was had the very similar value system as I did. 
And we basically, we were going, you know, he's also my business partner, my spouse of 19 years. And so we were flying to Las Vegas to celebrate our one year uh, anniversary. And basically we decided, you know, on that particular plane trip that we wanted to start a business. So we wrote our name down on a napkin. And this was before, the, you know, Blackberries. this was right on the hinge of maybe a Blackberry being very popular. But there was no Blackberries. There was no cell phone. There was no notes. Uh, I don't even think people were traveling with laptops even, even then, maybe some, but not a whole lot. So we actually asked the, air, the flight attendant, could we borrow a pen? And we actually sketched out GXA on a napkin, and it stands for George and Alicia. And we actually sketched out the logo, which is the logo, you know, right above my head. Uh, that is that we sketched that on a, on a napkin. We, we got our colors down right away. Uh, of course, we had no idea that this would, would take off to the, to the level it is now. But the reason why we did this is because we really had this greater desire to give back on a much larger scale. This when we when we set out to start GXA, we, we always built a model that we wanted to number one, we wanted our time back. So we wanted to be able to take off when we wanted to take off to go travel and to go help other people to go out on the missionary field. Um, you know, we come from a faith based community. And so, you know, being, and we had an opportunity to participate and, and volunteer in orphanage homes and things of that nature. And so we wanted to be able to do this on a regular basis. We, we just felt like we were called to be like part time missionaries, but we needed a way to support our, you know, this, this venture that we were going to go on as being a part time missionary, as well as we wanted a way to support these children and students in the next generation. So we felt like if we put our skills together and decided that you, basically, first of all, we had to have a problem to solve. So let me make sure I speak the business language too. We noticed there was a problem and we felt like if we could put our skills together, we could solve the problem, but we could also use that income to sustain us on the missionary field and give back and help uh, other students. And we knew that the American dollar went much further in, in other countries. So we, we just, we knew the value of the education system so we we had this great we had our why down why you know why GXA GXA the why was we were all about service we wanted to give back that was our why and it was large enough to keep us going you know this has been 17 years ago we've been doing this for 17 years incorporated for 12 but literally that why has kept us going for so many years since we've been out here we've had an opportunity to give back to over 30 nonprofit organizations. Uh, we've been, you know, involved in building computer labs in Nigeria, as well as Kenya. Uh, we've had an opportunity to send employees full time to third world countries to build computer labs. So this why that we why we did this, it was so much larger than us. And of course, COVID, you know, kind of put everything to a screeching halt. But we consistently well over 10 years have been a part of non the nonprofit arena you know, very intentional, very intentional. This wasn't a marketing scheme. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't our, our way to get attention in the business community because ultimately this model that we had built was only for George and I. It wasn't a model that was built to involve other people. We didn't have a, a dream to involve employees and to be incorporated and to, to run a business. We didn't do all of that. We really just did it because we wanted to help other people. And then it ended up taking off and other people are, is, ended up joining us. <laughs> that is fantastic. I mean, that that's, you see, that that's the beauty of this, isn't it? I mean, you started off with the passion and, yeah. and the belief and the goal. And then because people saw what you were doing, they said, we want to jump in and we want to help you get there. And, and that that's, that is amazing. I mean, that's, that's what, you know, as you say, you know, <laughs> serve and that and that's what you you've done so so let's talk you just talked about the why but let's talk about what you, what gxa is it's a, it's an it company gxa gxa it and yes. you're an award-winning it company aren't you yes absolutely so since inception we we've been we have won four awards three for the fastest growing companies, three, three of the awards have been Inc. 5000, the fastest growing company in the nation, 2014, 2019, and 2020. And then in 2020, we also won out of two, one of 250 of the 
most inspiring companies in the state of Texas. So fantastic. Well done. Yeah, this ended up taking off. Um, we had no idea that it would go to this degree. Uh, very excited to, to, to really see that we're being honored for our work that we've done in the community, but as well as really running a very tight operation. So GXA, what we do is we provide IT support for other businesses. So we noticed that a lot of small businesses do not have access to enterprise level technology or enterprise level technology talent, because you can have access to, to you know, like Best Buy, Geek Squad. I mean, not nothing against them because they are definitely needed. But there comes a time in your business that you need a lot more, a, a bigger, more robust, more mature technology organization. And you really do need a fractional uh, virtual uh, IT manager. You need a fractional VCIO uh, you also may need a fractional direct IT director. And what we do is we actually bring an entire team and, and allow you to have access to a technical uh, team that has these skills. So we have virtual IT managers. Uh, we also have virtual CIO that you would have access to. Then we have a projects team. So if you're getting ready to do upgrades, which was very vital during COVID, a lot of companies called us and said, we need to upgrade because we're not prepared for all of our workers to go remote. Well, right. if you had already hired GXA and we're part of your team, then we just basically delivered the service. You didn't have to go out in the community and go find someone. A lot of people moved to the cloud because they needed access to data 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A lot of people needed access to laptops. Uh, we're, we are our vendor reseller. So we got an opportunity to get access to laptops. At one time, laptops were hard to find. Yeah, You know, stores were selling out of laptops. We, Because we are a vendor as well as an IT company, we actually can resell those laptops and those devices to you at less cost. And you can get uh, early access to these things because we can get them at, in a bulk scale. Well, I mean, you know, one of the things that I know talking to business owners is every day, I mean, I, that's what we do here at Business Class News, is that technology is ever changing. And if you're focused on your product and your service, et cetera, then sometimes you just don't have time to be thinking about until it goes wrong. <laughs> until it goes wrong. And then it comes the forefront of mind. You go, I need somebody to help me. But at the end of the day, that's not what you should be doing. You should be running your business. You should be having yes. things ticking along in the background and have somebody like yourself coming in and saying, look, there's got to be critical updates that you need to, to install. Because sometimes computers, they, they're they set to, you don't even know it. They're not even set to actually go and update Windows updates and things like that. Make sure that there's updates of critical systems so that you're not going to all of a sudden wake up in the morning and turn it on and it goes blue screen. And that's a nightmare. I've been there years yeah. ago. It was like, no, 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 no. I don't want that. But, you know, secondly, to, to all of this, we've been talking, we have a section on business class news called business class security. Uh, and, you know, we run stories all the time about where there's, there's threats to uh, systems, there's, uh, there's phishing, there's all these types of things. But there are things that you can put in place, isn't there, from, uh, from an infrastructure standpoint to actually help. Um, and, you know, you can, you can help with that, that side of things, I believe. Yes. And so we are, we are considered a managed service provider. Uh, and so basically a managed service provider, what we do is we deliver uh, basically a technology package at one price. So you get a one-stop shop, you can get everything you need at one, one particular company. So the, the security features that we're going to recommend are going to be very basic. They're going to be things such as turning on two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is becoming very, very popular. It basically means when you log into your account, uh, then the computer is going to text your phone and say, put in this number in your particular email or your login to make sure it's you. Though that's one of the most very basic things that you can have your IT company, if you don't have one, set up for your users is logging in and making sure you have two-factor authentication. You also want to be doing some type of security training on a regular basis to all your users. We do what is called phishing tests. So we sent out to our users fake 
emails, almost like you're, we're a hacker. We disguise ourselves internally uh, as well as we have our clients set up like this disguise ourselves and you know they'll sometimes they'll send out an email and they'll say it's from me and it's really not from me asking for your account number if you click on the email attachment or you actually provide any information you have now failed your phishing test and you have now automatically signed up for a 30 minute course online <laughs> excellent on, on how to protect yourself if your IT company is not penetrating your system on a regular basis, your users to get, basically because this is this clicking, 80% of all hackers can be prevented and it's coming through email because our users are clicking on stuff. Yep. The most important thing we try to do is educate our users and let them know when you see suspicious emails, number one, don't click on anything from people that you don't know. No, no, no. Always verify if someone is sending you and asking you to take an action. We want to educate the user. So we have what is called cyber training that's set up. You can purchase this with, with one of the packages that we actually sell, or you can buy this from your MSP company. But always keep in mind, an MSP such as myself, we are not cybersecurity organizations. We are only going to set up the basic very basic principles or very basic uh, elements in order for you to be protected. That means we're going to set up a firewall. We're going to set up anti-spam. Those are things that you'll need is firewall, uh, anti-spam. So to make sure that you're not, that when you're surfing the web, that you're not clicking on anything that's malicious. There's about, you know, four things that, that just very basic. They're probably set up in your computer, Carl, and you don't even know it. Right. Uh, you have a firewall, you have anti-spam, that's set up. And then other things that you, you're, you, you can actually do is the two-factor authentication. These are things that you can do. And then, of course, you want to be making sure that you're backing up everything. Because if you get hacked, the key to surviving a hack is making sure you have a backup. Because if you yeah. have a backup, then even if, if ransomware happens and you have a backup, you have your data being stored off-site. You can be up and running in no time. So that backup is so important. That's what a managed service provider does. However, if you are a more advanced organization, such as healthcare or a bank, you will need to hire a cybersecurity expert. And, and we do have a, a, another company that basically is a, a cybersecurity organization that we partner with that will allow you to set up more advanced features, such as being uh, NIST certified, that basically takes your elevation of, you know, basically your security to a whole nother level, because even the vendors you're doing business with have to meet certain security um, measures in order to even do business with you because you you also what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of things can you can have a, a hacker come in through one of your vendors that you hired so basically a cybersecurity organization really buttons you up that full 180 degree button up that's not what we do we are a managed service provider we it's almost like we're going to put everything on your system to sound the alarm if a hacker is in your system. But we're not protecting you. We're not going to fight. We're not going to defend you. A cybersecurity company will fight the good fight of faith for you. They actually have someone that can jump in right away as soon as they detect the bad guy, and they actually start doing things live to keep the bad guy from penetrating your system to a 100% degree. So that's what the difference is between having a managed service provider as well as a cybersecurity organization. And so some of our clients do have cybersecurity. But one of the things, if you don't do anything else, and maybe you're not mature enough to have a cybersecurity organization, consider purchasing cyber insurance. Very inexpensive, but it will save you tons of money if you get hacked or anything of that nature. It is our organization, uh, GXA. We do have a broker that we work with. You can definitely, if you're one of our clients, of course, you can get discounted cyber insurance. But if you're not, you can still reach out to me. I can still send you a referral to a broker who sells cybersecurity insurance. If you are a business, you should have cybersecurity insurance. Guess what? 
if you are a solo entrepreneur, that means it's just you in the shop. You are not off limits to a hacker. They don't care what your size is. That's right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the, a lot of the things you just said, uh, you know, first of all, um, you know, I, I think working hand in hand with with your your partner, your 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 service security partner and the services that you provide, uh, you know, again, because you know each other, you can actually seamlessly, you know, de deploy those those solutions. But we've we've had conversations with lawyers on, on this show where where they, they, they literally have said, you know, literally you've got to have education for your employees. The weakest link in any cybersecurity threat is the person, is that individual that just says, oh, that's a great sweepstakes. I can win a million dollars and I'll press on that button and then boom, there you go. You just lost a million dollars. So so you've got to be very careful. So lawyers, and you, as you say, cybersecurity insurance is, is out there now. Not a lot of people know that. So that's great. So people should you know, contact you to find out how to become a client as well as access, you know, those services. So, so you mentioned a lot of things there, but what would you say differentiates you, separate yourself within the marketplace? Because there are other MSPs out there as such, and uh, as you said, um, but, you know, what separates you? What, what would you say is your, your golden arrow? As you say, so, so our golden arrow, number one, we've been we've been doing this for 17 years, Carl. We've been out here a long time. Uh, we've survived a couple of dips in the economy. In 2008, we had a huge dip from the Bush years to the Obama years. We were still out here and we've actually our business model has sustained itself. Also, we are ISNO 9001 certified. So there are certain processes that we follow internally to make sure that our services are consistent and the client, our clients are receiving consistent service. There's just things that we do to make sure that number one, security is at our top and foremost number one uh, you know, agenda when we are servicing you. Um, making sure that there are certain things on your machine that because you have a problem, people are not turning off two-factor authentication. That's so important. Um, and so we are we are all about security first. We have ISO 9001. Our customer satisfaction rate is on our website. It's live. So and we we consistently keep a customer satisfaction rate of 95% and above. You can go to my website right now. And look at my customer satisfaction rate. My customers who are actually uh, we re, that are putting in tickets and we're resolving the tickets, they can leave a rating and it is live. It, it goes up and down. It does. And it gets updated once a week. And so, and it's automatic, you know, on, it basically is connected to our crew who on the back end, but it's automatic. We're not manipulating the numbers. The numbers is live. And so look at your company or organization and see what is their customer satisfaction rating. Ours is live. It's been, it stays at 95% and higher. Um, we have resolved over 260,000 IT issues. Wow. And we only update that number once a year now because we, you know, we're in August now. So it's probably went up since our last update in January. But that information is live on my website as well. How many issues that we have resolved. We've been out here for a very long time. We also have a high uh, client retention rate. And so our first client that we've ever signed up with is still with us. Been with us, Carl, for over 14 years now. Great. And so our first client is basically still with us. Our first employee that we ever hired is still with me as well. And so those are things that you want to look at when you are looking and shopping the market for a MSP, for a managed service provider that can provide you IT support on a regular basis. Now, of course, we are, you know, some of the obvious things, um, the, the one I'm a woman owned organization. A lot of people, you know, that that could be good or bad. You know, it just always depends on your perception. But please don't let my gender disrupt you in in not choosing me because I am a woman owned IT provider. I am, we are locked and loaded with a lot of IT experts. I've been in doing this for a number of years. Um, that is a differentiator. 
Oh, absolutely. Hey, and, and let me just put the record straight. You're, you're a veteran women-owned business as well. So, I mean, <laughs> as you said it right at the top of the show, you know, we, we, you, you're, you're, you're process orientated, and that is instilled within your organization. And, and again, the fact that you've resolved so many of those tickets is because you have a process, you put a plan in place, etc. And the other thing of this is you give back as well. You, yes. you talked about your nonprofit, your philanthropy sort of mentality, et cetera, your, your, your goals. You give back as well through the revenue that you earn. You earn, you give back a percentage of that, which is applaudable. Thank you for doing that. You're very welcome. So, you know, I like to sometimes end the show by saying, well, give me a summary because I like to have uh, our audience, our viewers, our readers, our listeners, because it's going to go out as video as well as on our podcast as such. Uh, and we'll put putting all the information on business class news as well. I always like to say, well, what is the value? What is a takeaway? You've given us some golden nuggets there about you know, things you should be putting into play, like the, the two-factor authorization. I got to admit, when I first saw that, um, I was like, I don't really know what that is. So I just kind of went, whoop, you know, I don't <laughs> want to know about that. It seems too complicated. But now, you know, you've, you've sort of said it's kind of important when somebody says turn that on because we have that ability. So, so I'm going to revisit that. Uh, but um, but so, so just in summary, you know, what is it something you want to instill to, to the viewers and the listeners out there? Well, most importantly, you know, when it comes to technology, you can either allow technology to propel your business forward or you can allow it to hold you back. And so I, the information that I shared with you today, I want you to be very cognizant of number one security first when it comes to technology. Utilize technology in a manner that is going to allow you to be more efficient, but you also have to stay safe. You know, there's going to be lines of business applications that you're going to have relationships with. It's going to help your customers have better experiences. But you always want to make sure that those line of business applications have your best interest at heart and making sure that they have secure features in place. Security first, if, if nothing else that I want you to take away with security first when it comes to your technology. And even this even goes with your family, your children. Uh, security first, always taken into consideration of uh, putting some controls, uh, parental controls on your computers if you have small children around. And so because security is very much at the most top part of this nation's awareness right now, uh, we are in a cybersecurity war. If you have not realized it in our nation, uh, the the basically the just going after information and people trying to steal your information Always keep in mind, just think twice before you put in or give people your, your check number, credit card number, never pass a credit card number via email. Always just tell them, I'll call you with my number. <laughs> um, always just try to be very security conscious, purchase cybersecurity insurance, use technology to help propel you forward, not to hold you back. Consider hiring a technology expert if you have not thought about it. It will save you tons of headaches and money. Um, I know it may be sometimes you think hiring a technology expert is way too expensive, but it's nothing more expensive than having your identity stolen. So place your money in the right place. Get yourself a good sound technology company or technology expert that can help you propel and move yourself forward. And more importantly, I'm, I'm always a resource Definitely look us up online at www.gxait.com. You can follow me on LinkedIn. You can follow our organization. Our, our handle is also GXAIT on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, as well as Instagram. So we're always giving out different type of tips that you can utilize in your everyday life on how to keep yourself safe. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Me. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm going to say now, you know, don't forget, forget about going and finding somebody else. Go, just go and talk to you right now. I've got, oh, I've got the, 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 the website on the screen as we speak. And so everybody out there can, can actually, you know, check your website out and the services, et cetera. Uh, and I wanted to thank you. I mean, we come unfortunately to the end of our little segment here, but thank you again for joining me. Um, it's been, uh, been been a pleasure. It really has. And uh, you, you, I, I'm, I know there's going to be topics that come up 
um, that I need to have you back on the show. So uh, again, uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and learning more about GXAIT. Uh, so thanks so much. Thanks, Carl. Of course, that was Alicia um, uh, at uh, GXAIT. Um, I've got the information at the bottom of the screen here. And also, if you're listening to this, it's within the body copy of the uh, description of this uh, this show. And so, you know, one thing that you, you that I really want to, to underline what Alicia was saying uh, is that make sure that your te technology is up to date, it's updated, et cetera. And if you don't know how to do that, well, now you know who to go and turn to because uh, Alicia and her team uh, actually know how to get that done. And uh, I'm so pleased that we had on our show. So as I say, every, every week, you know, go out there, have some fun, but make some money because, hey, we're called Business Class News, and this is Vets for Vets Nation. Go and support your veterans. Go and check check out the services and products, and, and, and because at the end of the day, they gave their service for you, and we want to give back to them. So thanks so much for joining me today, and have fun. Goodbye until the next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>